GameStop is buying your Pokemon cards, and in this video, we're going to be talking about everything you need to know about how much they're pricing things, how much they're going to be buying your Pokemon cards for, uh, what the stipulations are, because there are some stipulations that they're doing. Um, we're going to be talking about all that and more possible market manipulation that could be at play, but it's going to be a good one. Definitely stay tuned to the end of the video. Also, don't forget about that monthly giveaway that we've got going on for this month. We're going to be giving away this Alakazam EX box. Without further ado, let's get into the computer and talk about GameStop. So I just started recording this whole segment of the video and I got all the way through and I realized that I was stuck on the webcam. <laughs> so that was a really silly mistake of mine, but we're just going to go ahead and go into the computer here and get right into it where graded collectibles get cash today for your trading cards. And uh, basically GameStop is going to be offering money and store credit for your PSA graded cards. And there's a few stipulations that I just wanna get out of the way real quick that I'm aware of. There might be more that I'm not aware of, but as of right now, the stipulations are, number one, they're only buying PSA graded cards. Number two, it's only an eight grade or above, so eight, nine, or 10. And then number three, they're only buying cards that are valued at $500 or less. And I think part of that is just because they're trying to stay away from like the scams. And um, also, I mean, they're just gonna be smaller locations where if someone walks in with a $15,000 card, they're not gonna be able to spot them, you know, $12,000 in cash, you know? So, so really that makes sense, um, a lot of those stipulations. But if there is any more, uh, feel free to comment down below and let me know. Um, I'd be very curious to hear about that. But after getting that out of the way, I wanted to take a look at this little article here that um, they talked about going to a location and I would have loved to go to my own personal location and be able to tell you guys how much they offered me for what cards. Um, but unfortunately, I'm here in Montana and they are not doing it here yet. As you can see, they soft launched at 200 stores in Texas, Connecticut, Kentucky, Georgia, Mississippi, Tennessee, and New York. So unfortunately, I'm not able to uh, explore this you know, more in depth as of right now, but I can look at it through the guise of these guys, uh, Water Pokemon Master, and they uh, talk about how they went to GameStop to, uh, they, they got GameStop's offer for a PSA 10 Jolteon VMAX uh, for $158 cash, and then they also offered up this Neuvern uh, V from Evolving Skies in a PSA 10, and $120, uh, $121 in cash, and then 135 store credit. So I worked out the math, and basically how that compares to actual sales, if you go to eBay, we can see this is the Jolteon VMAX right here. We can see that there's another PSA 10 all the way down here. So very consistently, it's selling for about 210, 220. And what it works out to is about 70% of FMV is what they're offering, which is pretty competitive. Like I've gotta say, for 70% cash, that's great. Like, I actually think that that's really good. Um, but of course, how consistent that is that gonna be? And also, I, I don't know, you know, it could be a little bit less than 70%, it could be more like 60%, but either way, like compared to GameStop's horrendous, you know, past with making offers for, for used games, like, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's kind of, honestly, it's kind of a funny turnaround for GameStop, you know? Um, but anyway, so, they offered that much for cash, and um, you can see right here, if we scroll down, they could be paid in cash or store credit, but cash will be 10% less. So it seems like store credit will be around the 70 to 80%, while cash will be around the 60 to 70%. And um, I do wanna say that I think that there is a serious potential for maybe some market manipulation. Um, we'll definitely talk about that a little bit more at the end of this video. So stay tuned for this whole video. We're gonna talk about a whole bunch of interesting topics. Um, but you can see right here, so um, they actually have an internal checklist as well for their employees. And we can look at this a little bit closer, graded collectible checklist. So they've got the holder, um, the label, and the tampering sections where they're going to have to check off these little boxes. So they've got injection spot. Run your finger along the bottom of the case. You will feel a bump in the center. If the case is completely smooth, reject the trade. Wow, so hard, just hard reject it if any of these do not pass. 
Ticks, hold the case flat and look at it from the side. On the left side, on the left and right sides of the case, you will see three ticks or small lines. If these are absent, reject the trade. How interesting. This could actually be really useful for people who are afraid of uh, potentially getting fake slabs because there are fake slabs that, you know, are circulating probably. So part numbers. Expect the bottom right corner for a part number. If this is absent or does not read 1T, or I think that's maybe IT, 27 or 21, reject the trade. Rails. Inside the case, you'll see two vertical and horizontal lines of plastic that hold the card in place with a taper at the end. If these are absent or missing the taper, reject the trade. 90, angle, 90 degree angles around the case is a transparent section of the case. The corners here should come to a perfect 90 degree angle. The corners around it are not crisp. Reject the trade. So basically, those are some solid tips, actually, for, for making sure that your holder is sound and correct. I'm not going to go through all the other ones um, just because... You know, I'll let you screenshot that or or pause the video right there if you want to read the other ones. But we we do have a lot to cover in this video. So basically, I wanted to pretty much just look at some of the listings that they had on GameStop um, already because they already have a bunch listed on GameStop, and we're gonna look at some of the highs and some of the lows because they did kind of stray from the actual price pretty far for some of these, uh, but they actually nailed it with some of these. So number one, we're gonna be looking at Lugia Legend uh, from Japanese Soul Silver, uh, first edition, and this is in a PSA 9, and they're asking almost $300. And then they've actually got the top part there, which is the number 29, uh, which is the other half of the Lugia for $254. And um, I've got to say, this is an example of where I don't know if they paid m too much or what happened because it looks to me like the set just recently sold for a PSA 9 set for $255. So I think that they either massively overpaid for it um, or these are just massively overpriced because it seems to me like this card is probably worth about 150 and this card is worth about a hundred bucks, um, which they have it for about 200% of that, you know, like 150% of that price. So I think that they definitely overpriced that. But if we look at this next card, the V-Star Universe Arceus Gold, see they have it priced at $75. And if you look at last sales, there's actually... A couple, a couple last sold, so 75 best offer accepted, and then $80, buy it now. So they actually kind of nailed this one. Uh, PSA 10, they, they nailed it with a price on this one. Um, and next up, we've got the Charmander uh, 168. This is the Japanese 151, and this one's priced at $54, which I'm already, I can already tell, like, this is way too much um, because, you know, I've seen, like, I've seen it sell for like, a, here, you got one for a dollar, you know, uh, plus $4 shipping, but but a dollar for this one. And um, and then you scroll down, you know, like English is selling for about 30 bucks raw. So I think English would, I feel like this is an example of them maybe mistaking this for the English version of the card, um, or maybe it's just, you know, overpriced. Um, but you can see here, you know, there's a, a CGC Pristine 10 that sold for $10. You know, that's, that's crazy. It's like, you know, not even the cost of grading. Um, and then you've got this one right here, uh, PSA 10 sold for 27 bucks. So I think this one most most likely is just a mistake. It sh should have been uh, a, a 25 to $30 card, but I think that it was possibly priced as an English. I'm not sure how they're pricing their cards, um, but I'd be very curious to, to find out more about that if any of you guys know uh, watching this video. <clears throat> Next up, we've got the Dark Charizard number four. This is the non-first edition. Looks like it actually has a little swirl there. Um, that's pretty cool. And uh, yeah, this is a PSA 9. They're asking $230. And if we look at eBay here, we could see that there is um, some CGC blue labels that sold for around that mark. Um, but PSA is what we're looking at. PSA 9 sold for $243. Um, and then there was another sale for 250 right here. So so that's actually pretty appropriately priced. It's no longer available. And I think that part of the reason for that is just because it was a good price. You know, it was, it was just well priced. Uh, and then the last one on this list we're going to look at is the Celebi V from Fusion Strike. 
They're asking 143 for this beautiful card in a PSA 10. Um, and if we look right on the, the dime there for 143 by Probstein there. Um, and yeah, this is a great price for that card. So really solid pricing on some of these. Um, some of the other ones, I'm not so sure. Um, but I do want to talk real quick about this market manipulation um, and what I think could happen. Because basically, whatever pricing data they're using, I'm sure that it's grabbing sales from eBay because a lot of these are actually pretty consistently priced with eBay. And um, basically, market manipulation, what it is, is people will sell a card for an exorbitant amount and they will buy their own card or have their friend buy their card and then they will cancel the order and they won't actually go through with it. They won't have the money go through because then they'll lose money to fees and et cetera, you know, all of that. Um, but then they'll take, you know, another dozen of those cards that they have in that grade and they will offload them to some company that will buy cards just without any know-how, any knowledge. Um, and I think that that could potentially be something that happens here at GameStop. I think GameStop could be a way for just a bunch of these market manipulation cards that just get fed off over to GameStop, get cash, and get out. And um, I think that that could be a serious problem. You know, I'd be very concerned. I, I wonder if GameStop will have any stipulations for like how recent a sale was, or maybe um, they won't accept like 10 of the same card. Like if some guy walks in with 10 of the of the Morty's Conviction um, from Temporal Forces, you know, if they walk up with with 10 of those and they sell them, you know, are they going to accept all of those? Um, especially if they're a really high price. I don't know how that's going to work, but I think that there's a serious potential for that happening. Um, and I just... I don't know, you know, I don't know if this is, maybe this might be the nail in the coffin for GameStop, you know, I don't know um, if this is going to really help their model and completely change it up. I think it's really cool that they're doing this, um, but I don't know how it's gonna work out. I don't know if it's gonna spread in more locations, but I'd be really curious to hear your guys' thoughts on all of this. Um, it was really fun making this video. It's really cool to be able to uh, talk about these topics with you guys and be able to uh, get together as a community and see how we feel about these new systems that are in place. Um, but I hope you guys enjoyed this one. As always, don't forget about that giveaway. Make sure to comment, like, and subscribe on this video, and uh, you'll be entered to win that awesome Alakazam EX box. I appreciate you guys, and we'll catch you in the next one. Bye.